Jorge Hernandez with Combat Sports Weekly here with Holly Holm. The time has come. You're in your fourth year as a professional, and you're finally at, in the UFC. What's the anticipation like? You know, it's, it's a lot of anticipation and a lot of expectation. There's a lot of nerves, excitement. Um, I have everything. Uh, I feel stressed out on some days and really excited on other days. And just, you know, normal training camp, though, other than that, I've put in a lot of hard work and I'm just really ready to get in there. Now, of course, you'll be taking on Raquel Pennington in the co-main event. You just all of a sudden jumped from the intro of the card to co-main event. Do you feel any different or have you, all your big boxing matches prepared you for a moment like this? I think that a lot of the opposition I faced, a lot of the opponents I faced in boxing um, have helped tremendously with the mindset uh, for the fight. But it definitely is a little bit more to be the co-main event and, and kind of have, like I said, this expectation on, on having to do well, um, which is good for me. It just gives me drive and motivation, and I just use it for a positive motivation. Now, your opponent, Raquel Pennington, is someone you were supposed to fight back in December before your injury, of course. So how, do you, how confident do you feel, especially since your coaches and yourself have been studying this opponent for quite some time? You know, I, I feel good. I feel like... We have a good game plan going into this fight. Also, on the other side, she might not do everything we think she might be doing. So we kind of leave the game plan with like a little bit of wiggle room. So that way, if we need to adjust things and change things as the fight goes on, then we can do that. Now, you, of course, you're coming off a couple of injuries over the past two years. For people that have questions about your health, how do you feel? I feel great. I've been training 100% striking, grappling, wrestling, everything. So I have no... No complaints, uh, no excuses. Does it almost feel surreal that it's finally here? Yes. Uh, I've had a lot of, you know, strong days training. I've had a lot of emotional days training. and But all the hard work is mostly done. We still have, you know, I still have some workouts to do and still kind of just making weight. And then just, you know, the mental kind of build up and the days that lead up to a fight. So there's still a lot to, to do and a lot to experience between now and next Saturday, but uh, most of the hard work is done. What do you think your nerves and excitement are gonna be like that morning? Um, I do not like the way it feels the morning of a fight when you, you know, a lot of people, the way I try to explain it, if you're having a nightmare, you wake up and you think, oh, thank goodness that wasn't real. And this is kind of, you're off in la-la land in your dreams, then you wake up and you're like, oh, yeah, it's real, it's fight day. Yeah. So Now, of course, for this fight, you're playing, a, I guess, lead-in to a fight between Ronda Rousey and Zagano. So recently, of course, we've heard uh, Rousey's coach kind of, I guess, question your boxing skills almost by saying that Rousey is better <laughs> than you. I mean, you did it for so long. With a yeah. comment like that, how do you feel? You know, I don't take offense to it. I think that any trainer should have all the confidence in, in their fighter. Um, I don't know how I would feel if my coaches didn't have the confidence in me. So uh, I don't take any offense to it, but um, I can only hope that they actually underestimate me, which I know they aren't doing that. Mm. Uh, I think it's just a lot of um, talk and hype. And, and like I said, he, he just believes in her. So. Yeah. And finally, a message to all your fans there, especially in this huge combat sports community that you have in New Mexico yeah. backing you up. You know, I, I, I honestly couldn't have even handpicked better <laughs> support. Uh, the fans here are great, and there's a lot of people going out to the fight. My teammates here are fantastic. My coaches are the best in the world. I have the best support of family, most supportive husband. I'm very blessed. Yeah. Well, February 28th, UFC 184 at the Staples Center. Raquel Pennington against New Mexico's Holly Holm. Best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. Welcome back to Combat Sports Weekly. Joining us now is an MMA fighter from the UFC welterweight division. On February 28th, he'll be facing Diego Lima on the UFC 184 card live from the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Joining us, Moriarty, New Mexico's Tim Means. How you doing, Tim? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Diego Lima. February 28th, you know, it's, it's pretty close. What do you know about the guy and how do you feel going into this after being successful in two consecutive fights? Um, Diego likes to bully people, so I'm thinking it's a style. He'll, he'll come play into my, my strong points, so expect him to want to wrestle after we engage a little bit, but I've um, been working a lot on the wrestling. I feel a lot better at welterweight, so I'm ready to rock and roll. Do you guys watch, do you watch a lot of film coming into a fight or is it just something that you game plan yourself? Um, I let Coach handle most of the footage stuff. I'll watch around the first round and then the third round, see how he's reacting when he's tired. Cool. But uh, not, not, not too much. You know, I let him bring the looks in, the, the, the sparring partners, that good stuff, and I just try to focus on what I'm good at. Awesome. 
Now, obviously, you had a fighter, a partner here that fought on February 14th, so you had to do a lot of the dirty work in the gym. Tell us about that, because some of your coaches were out of the town. Um, yeah, we have a plumbing issue going on, so we had to get that fixed, you know, and coaching, coaching plus training, you know. We're trying to stop in the middle of classes, tell the team what they need to do, and then get your own training going. But I love my team. We have a cool, a cool group over there, and um, just enjoy being in the gym and helping out. Tell us about that vibe at Fit and HB where you actually train because there's a couple of you and you guys have several other fighters, world renowned fighters come and train there. What's that like to have a few guys that are in the UFC that are born and bred here um, in Mexico? It, we have a lot of fighters in general that, you know, not so much on the highest stage, but those guys get us ready for these fights and they might not have big names, but they're big to the team and uh, they help give good looks and get us ready for the next show. And, you know, I can say her name off a handful of guys that I think are ready for that that step up. But Tom Vaughn does a real good job at uh, negotiating their careers and uh, putting them in the right direction and keeping them centered. So um, hats off to Tom Vaughn and the coaching staff at FIT. Now, your last fight, you fought uh, Mauricio Alexander, and you were one of the first fights on that Brazilian card. And at the end, you kind of tried to instigate and provoke the crowd with some of the comments that you said. What made you want to call out the crowd and put them on blast because you beat one of their own in their own country, is that what that was? You know, when I walked out, they were, they, they, they chant, you know, I hope you're gonna die or I wish you're gonna die or Dubai some crazy head. thing. Yeah. And they're throwing stuff at you and they're booing you the whole time. And it's cool, they back their people, they back their fighters, you know, but uh, at the end of it, I just felt they were a little too quiet. You know, I thought <laughs> I should have ended the fight in the second round. Mm. Um, you know, it, it was a close call. The, 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 the ref did the best he could with the situation, but, uh, you know, I just thought they were a little quiet and they needed to, they, if they were all sitting down, they were doing the wrong thing at that point. So I left the crowd there, everybody on their feet. The middle finger means the same thing there as it does here. So um, I'm happy to stir up the hornet's nest, you know. They'll, they'll be talking about me or they'll want to watch me lose in the next fight, so they'll tune in. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. With you being a seven-fight UFC veteran and then coming back from being cut and then you're on a two fight winning streak. Tell us about that, that, how you feel, how that motivates you. Um, you know, the idea for 155 was supposed to be short term, fight some big name guys and, and, then, and then move up. Um, unfortunately, I was t getting fights on two weeks notice or eight days notice. And uh, if you're a fighter, you need money. And at that time, I wasn't thinking about my well being. Uh, I was thinking about a paycheck and, um, you know, the weight cut was becoming to be too hard. Joe Silva offered me the opportunity to move up and I needed to move to Legacy for a couple of fights. Uh, that's what I did and he said he'd be calling me, which, which he did. And uh, they brought me back for the Neil Magny fight. Now what took place between that break whenever the UFC, because you had a 500 record, I believe, before you went on to Legacy. So what took place there? Was it a cut and they said, hey, we'll see how you do in the uh, new division? They, they were concerned about the health issues with the cut. You know, they, they sent me to the doctors and to the best people they had, got me checked out. And uh, they, 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 they liked my style. They, they liked to have me on the cards because I show up to fight, but um, they wanted to make sure it was in my best interest. And uh, they really took care of me and uh, sent me in the right direction. Talk about some of those difficulties that you had cutting that much weight because, you know, most of us do remember the unfortunate Asana incident that you had because you, you were trying to cut weight before weigh-in. So how difficult of a cut was that? And how happy are you to be at welterweight? Um, you know, it's got, you know, super happy to be at welterweight. <laughs> you know, I hate that sauna, you know. Um, <laughs> It, it is what it is, you know. It was something that I was forcing myself to do because I had a contract at that time. Um, but at the same time, it's hard, like Jody and I were talking about, it's hard to tell yourself no or you know you can't do it when you have a mindset mm -hmm. of uh, I'm, I'm not backing down to any challenge. Right. And, um, you know, the older you get, the smarter and the wiser you get. And uh, I'm stubborn and have to learn things the hard way. Right, absolutely. So is it a big contrast in how you feel in your new weight class is it like night and day type thing you feel great you feel awesome it's just yeah, yeah just unbelievable yeah. i've been in the weight room which i never focused on i've never been in the weight room you know can't i don't know if you can tell about the muscles <laughs> right. but uh, they're there just just a new new aspect of fighting and fighting's become fun i'm learning in the gym i'm not oh. doing a whole lot of hard sparring you know everything's technical and going through regular classes and you know the boxing classes the wrestling classes and just I'm just learning, you know. That's really cool how you mentioned, you know, because um, I, don't, I don't think a lot of the times the fans think about, oh, well, why did he even take that fight? Like, why did he think that he could make that much weight? And what was he doing killing himself in the sauna? That's crazy. But, it, but it's really cool to hear you say, you know, it's hard to tell yourself no when you're in that position, you know, on top of being an athlete and being 
um, a fighter, like that's what you do is fight and then needing money and they're saying, hey, here's, here's this paycheck. It's really hard to turn that down. So yeah, thanks for sharing that. You know, a lot of people don't think about that and the fans don't think about that either. What kind of pressure you have as a fighter to, to say yes. Right. You know? it, you, and you have a lot of issues with uh, letting yourself down in a lot of ways, you know, like you get to a point where, you know, f you have friends that come and go and things of that nature, but you're always stuck with yourself and how are you going to feel about yourself at the end of the night? And um, I've never, I've just never been one to be able to turn away things. And uh, I'm learning to say no now. So, right. you know, it's a, it, it's a new form of me. Now, February 28th is going to be your fight. You're going to be on the Fox Sports 1 portion of the card. So, of course, before we let you go, I know that a lot goes into training camp. A lot of people that actually support, you know, who, who out there is it that you'd like to thank for? Uh, damage, damage control mouth guards are always supportive for, for all my fights. TKOVapor.com. Um, sports, Unleash Sports Nutrition in uh, Rio Rancho, and uh, Trent Cotney, uh, paralegal. Those guys support me. They help fund my training camps, and I just take care of me after a fight. They help get me prepared, supplements that I need, all that good stuff. So without them, without my team at Finn and HB, uh, I wouldn't be a humble guy today. So thank you. Now I know you're you're pretty good with social media. To tell the people where to follow you on Twitter. At means Tim, and uh, Tim Dirty Bird means on Facebook. Thanks Thank you, Tim. Thank you for your time. Thanks for joining us. Coming up after the break, join us for our roundtable.